I was deemed unhelpful, or unfixable, right? Like uh, I was that hopeless guy who could not stop drinking and drugging. My mother had bought me a plot. People had taken life insurance policies out of me, and I was on life support for seven days. So, needless to say, like no one was better for me to get sober, including myself. Because what I realized is like my very best thinking. You know, despite being a former professional skateboarder, despite being this guy that's been in movies and break box office records, despite being a New York Times author, my very best thinking in my life had me walking into my 13th inpatient treatment center. In theory and on paper, I was a very successful individual. I did things in life that people equate to success or happiness or that some even dream of doing. In reality, I was a 35-year-old man walking into my 13th treatment center. My worldly possessions consisted of eight scarves, two jackets, three socks, a stick of deodorant that all fit into a bag that doubles my pillow, and four cigarette butts in my pocket that I dug out of a cigarette receptacle. Wow. Like, that was my very best. And I'm like, you know what? I know that I don't know. And like I said, I was horrible with suicide because I kept waking up. I had tried so many times. Right. When I got clean, my sponsor said to me, he said, Novak, why would you go to the last person you stuck a needle in your arm with and ask that person for advice on how to better your life. And I'm like, wow, I'm the last person I put a needle in my arm with. And all of a sudden I'm gonna go to me, the same person that's shooting up on a daily basis and say, what should I do to better my life? So the best thing happened for me this time that, that, that could have happened, when I walked in that treatment center, for the first time in my life, I didn't have a plan. I had no agenda. All I knew is that I, I didn't want to feel how I felt. I stayed there for 90 days. I went to a sober living house for one year. And, and, and my pattern prior to, to this time was always I would get clean and, and I would leave treatment and, 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 and I would go to the gym, I would do yoga, I would do all these things and I would want a glass of wine. And then as soon as I was drinking a glass of wine, I need cocaine. And then I want to go to bed, so I do Xanax. And before I know it, I have a needle on my arm. And I knew that that was a problem, but I knew it was really a problem when my best friend, Bam, called out my pattern. And I'm like, fuck, like, you have your own issues, but like, you're calling mine out, like, this is bad. I wasn't scared of, of going out and drinking and drugging and dying. Right. What I was scared of was going out and drinking and drugging and not dying wow. and waking up every day and using against my will. Money, property, and prestige did not bring me happiness. I had had those things tenfold. Right. And the reality is, is, is because I was always confused. I thought social acceptability equal personal recovery. Right. So I thought if the bank account was high enough, the woman was pretty enough, the house was new enough, and the, the car was brand clean enough, right. I must be doing good. But the reality is when I had those things, I was never so broken, strung out, and, and just in a state of despair in my life. The statistics state, theoretical evidence dictates that I am to be high or dead right now. The fact that I'm not is A, miraculous, meaning miracle, and B, it defies logic. You know, I, I, I do a lot of interviews and they say, you know, would you take back anything from your past? And, and this is the honest to God truth. There's only one thing I would take back from my past, yeah. and that is... The, the sleepless nights and the pain that I've caused my loved ones. The, the, the giving everything up for another bag of heroin, I wouldn't change it in a heartbeat. Uh, because it has made me the man who I am today, man. You know? Yeah, the one thing I, I love the most, man, is like you're an open book. Like literally, you know, you're an open book here, man. And your story's out to tell people. And you have no secrets, man. I love it. That's the beauty of it, man. Like I want people to know that there's a light at the end of that very dark tunnel. A lot of people I hear they use because they felt very inadequate. You know, they, they, they felt like something was off. I was never that guy. I didn't use because I felt like something was missing in my life. I wasn't the guy that walked into a classroom 20 minutes late and was full of fear because I thought everyone was staring at me. I was the guy that walked in that classroom 20 minutes late and thought that everyone was waiting for me. Now I'm like an author. I'm a published author, a New York Times seller who's written a, a book on addiction. So now, like, I don't, and, and I'm doing all this. I wrote that book uh, on cocaine and wine. No way. And I'm receiving hundreds of thousands yeah. of pieces of mail from all over the world of people saying, Novak, 
I read your book. I didn't want my story to get as bad as yours. I have 30 days. Wow. Uh, people saying, no, like, I read your book. I understand why my father picks the bottle over having dinner with me on the weekends. It's not because I was a bad daughter. It's because he suffers from the disease of addiction. Now I can't understand anything because, like, I'm, my mind tells me I'm saving all these people's lives, but I can't keep a needle out of my own arm. Like, I had a lot of really good times drinking and drugging. Uh, I'd be a liar if I sat here and told you I did. Like, I had a lot of fucking phenomenal times partying. But at some point along the line, the party stopped and it became a full-time job that paid nothing but pain and misery. And then I got further along in my drinking and drugging career and I hit a point where I could no longer live with or without a drink or a drug. Wow, man. Like, no matter how much wine I drank, no matter how much heroin I shot, I was no longer okay with like doing those things against my will to get another bag of heroin. If my sponsor was telling me, if I plan on staying sober, plan on getting used to being divinely inconvenienced. So I don't honor my sobriety when it's convenient to me. I honor it at all times. Awesome. Because like people did for me what I cannot do for myself. So how dare I not fucking pay it forward?